Shalom everyone. This is Before the Throne, an online prayer program hosted by Mishka. From Monday to Friday, my name is Victor Dundo, the lead pastor at Mishkan. I am your host and kingdom partner in the marketplace. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Song by Thomas Dunn. Beloved, I would like to encourage you that in such times we need to learn and walk in the revelation of God as our mighty fortress and stronghold. Amen. Today our theme scripture is from Psalms 91. We are going to look at it line upon line. Verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. The term dwelling in this scripture is likened to an ideal marriage covenant relationship as God envisioned from the beginning. Because of the union or the joining of these two, they move in permanently to make a home. But even within their dwelling in that house, there is always a secret place not easily accessible and also concealed from the public eye for their intimate relationship. They are no longer visitors, but one in this home, sharing all the resources as one. They are equal partners in this dwelling place because the weaker easily accesses all the power, the wealth, the name or the power of attorney, the estates, etc., of the stronger one. Only a foolish man can dare fight this woman in her home. She is no longer just an individual, but she is her husband and her combined together. She is as strong as her husband. All the power and might of her husband are with her. But even if you succeeded outside her home, still, you are sure that there will be serious consequences. From the book of Genesis to Revelation, this has been God's pursuit with man. He desires to dwell in us and with us. Not just a visitation and we get excited. He wants permanence. Hallelujah. John 15, 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I would like you to consider the four names of God given in the first two verses. We see the Most High, meaning the lofty, supreme, or the sovereign one. Again, we see the word Almighty, meaning the strong and mighty one. Again, we encounter the word Lord, Meaning, the I am. I will be with you wherever you go. I can be what I can mean to be at any given time for you. I am your healer. I am your shepherd. And so on and so forth. We also see the word God, which is the creator who made the world from nothing 
and the supreme God of Israel. In Hebrew, a name reveals the character of a person. Therefore, all these abilities and qualities of God are accessed to the one who has this kind of relationship with God. If you have time, you can now put the meaning as you read those first two verses and it will give you a mighty revelation of who God is. You see, Jesus makes a statement in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. The word knowing in scripture implies an intimate, sacred relationship between the two. Jesus, while on earth, showed us openly the quality of their relationship with the Father. The scripture says in John 3.35, the Father loves the Son and has given all all things into his hand because of that kind of relationship. I would like us to look at the extent of this protection or quote in quote we can call it an insurance cover for this kind of man. We would like to look at the fine prints. Amen. Verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. A snare is a device that is secretly and carefully concealed but strategically set up to capture a targeted subject. This is what threatens the believer. Sometimes something attractive to the target is used as a bait so that the subject will get in there to eat and then get trapped. This is what God will be able to deliver you from. The scripture continues to say, and from the perilous pestilence, an engulfing ruin or calamity. A pestilence is an infectious disease or plague. The idea here is not just delivering you from your enemies, but a stripping away from or spoiling your enemies. Your enemy gets bewildered, overwhelmed by the unexpected action of the Lord's superior force who suddenly attacks and snatches you away out of the hand of your enemies an infectious disease or plague like COVID-19 and many more that will come upon the earth. Verse 4 says, He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Hallelujah. The word terror is stronger than ordinary fear. With regard to the end time events that will come upon the earth, Jesus spoke of men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. Luke 21, 26. When we are in God, the greater one who is in us and who has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love 
power and of sound mind, we are sure to overcome all this. The Bible says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. Night in this verse is an obvious metaphor for the time when evil is most prevalent and we are most vulnerable due to sleep. We are unable to see the enemy lurking about. Thus, we are at a disadvantage. Amen? In defending ourselves. We are further disadvantaged by the element of surprise which the enemy possesses in his favor. And again, we are not able to see the enemy. Psalms 121, 2 to 4 says, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. His ministering spirits, the angels, will protect you as well. And that's the promise he gives us. There are many things that happen that you may not even know. But he who watches over you neither slumbers nor sleeps. The scripture continues to say, Know of the arrow that flies by day this this kind of arrow flies that means it moves at a terrific speed it has mortal danger it can kill verse 6 nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness wow first peter 5 it says be sober be diligent because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. The Bible continues to say, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. It brings ruin, it devastates, it destroys, it spoils at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you you can see that you can conquer a thousand eh, when God is on your side verse 8 only with your eyes shall you look uh -huh. let me add from your stronghold and see the reward of the wicked but the faithful will be miraculously delivered. They will survive and scathed. Verse 9 says, Because you have made the Lord, this is an intentional pursuit, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague meaning deadly epidemics shall come near your dwelling. Verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over you. He's going to appoint, to order, to commission his angels concerning you. This is what God does, not you commanding angels here and there. It is in the power of God to do so. They will keep you in all, not some, all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. There are many stones the enemy has put even on your side, on, on, your, on, your, on, on your way. But God will deliver you. Verse 13, you shall tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion, the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because you are one with God, 
the devil shall be under your authority. Securely under your feet, upon his neck. You see this in Luke 10, 19. Jesus appoints 70 of his followers and confirms on them the assurance of Psalms 91, 13. On lion and viper you shall tread. When they return, they report back to Jesus. Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. That is Luke 10, 17. Verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, such a person has a desired relationship with God. What happens next? Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, meaning an inaccessible, high and secure place. Because he has known my name, the character of my faithfulness in my name. Verse 15 says, He shall call upon me, and I will deliver him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the person that will enjoy a long, fulfilling life and they will see God's salvation. Beloved, you can see the extent of God's coverage and beyond or much more when we dwell in the Lord or make him as our stronghold or fortress. This is just a tip of the iceberg. There is much more. And therefore from today, I want you to begin to make a quality choice will be showing you how do I abide in this place. We are still giving you what to do. But we are going to be showing you how to do it so that we practically walk in this. We are still envisioning you. Amen. I want us to pray at this particular time. Father Lord our God, we want to thank you for who you are, the Lord God Almighty, our God and our Lord. Thank you for the revelation of your name, even in such times as we live in. You've not left us alone, but you said that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But Lord, we also pray in the name of Jesus, that you'll help us to walk in your ways. Because holiness is what keeps your presence around us and keeps you amongst us. We pray that as we move in these times, there shall be the fear of God in us. We shall activate and renew and walk in a covenant relationship with you. I pray that we'll set our love more up upon you, day by day, growing in the love of God, pursuing God, pursuing an intimate relationship. Lord, I pray that you'll deliver us from the distractions of this end times. Forgive us for our distractions. And yet, we keep on looking to your hands, the things that are in your hands. Give me this. I want this. But you are calling us to a deeper relationship, a heart-to-heart -heart relationship, a genuine walk with God, not because of the things you offer, but because of who you are. Lord, may we seek you for who you are. Help us. We pray, we surrender, 
we have chosen you and you alone. And therefore, this day as your people embark on their journeys to fulfilling your assignment in the areas you've called them, I pray that you will become their dwelling. Give them victory. Deliver them from the snare of the fowler. Deliver them from the arrows that fly by day. Deliver them from the pestilences, O oh Lord. Deliver them from diseases, sicknesses, accidents, and all the wicked plans of the enemy. You are our God, and therefore we call upon your name. Say in your word that call upon me in the day of trouble. I will hear you and deliver you. And therefore we look to you, for yours is the power, yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Beloved, the Lord go with you. The Lord keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We love you and God bless you. Let us join again to, uh, tomorrow, same time, Monday to Friday. God bless you. Shalom.